Life Management Science Labs would like to acknowledge that we live and produce this podcast on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands of our listeners and our international colleagues. We'd like to pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Hey everyone, and welcome to All Together, the Family Science Insights Podcast, produced by LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs. We are champions of life management science, providing structured insights informed by science and inspired by practice on key aspects of conscious living. Each week, we bring you scientific and practical insights on each element with the expert knowledge of professionals in the field. I'm your host, Dina Sargent. Let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode. Now, have you ever heard the term secure attachment? I know from my end, I've previously mentioned it in previous episodes when we're acknowledging the four different attachment styles. We're going to be discussing a little deeper into what a secure attachment is and how it is part of our parenting styles today. To help me discuss this topic is Associate Dean and Head of Early Childhood and Elementary Education, Dr. Amelia Lee. Thank you so much, Amelia, for joining me on the show today. Hi. Hi, everyone. Yeah, happy to to meet you on air. Yeah. (laughs) Now, as a professional, what is your role in building that knowledge for parents to be informed on the different attachment styles within our parenting? Uh, I think uh, I work uh, in this area through different aspects. Yeah, actually, I'm uh, working at a teacher's training institute. So I teach my students, student teachers, what what is important of the parenting and get them ready to be parents. And I also help with the education role of Hong Kong SAR to develop uh, three levels of uh, parent education framework. I just complete a uh, kindergarten uh, parent education framework in 2020 and then uh, for primary at uh, 2022. And I'm now working on the secondary level that will be completed in 2024. So my uh, passion and dedication to parent education is very uh, enjoyable and fulfilling. And as an observer as well, what has been one of the most frust- most common frustrations that parents face when going through that attachment style uh, form of parenting? Uh, maybe uh, uh, let me first uh, define what attachment is, uh, what are the challenges the parents may face uh, uh, when dealing with their children, okay? So uh, attachment is actually, um, uh, 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 as mentioned uh, by Dana before, that is uh, one specific area of relationship between a child and a, par- and a parent or caregiver because uh, there sometimes we have uh, extended family grandparents to take care of or nanny to take care of the child. So uh, the purpose of this relationship is to make the child feel safe, secure, and protected. So uh, as a parent, we play many roles. Sometimes we may be teacher, playmate, or some person to discipline the child, caregiver, and attachment. But the most important is the attachment that is making a significant impact on the child's later social and emotional outcome. So uh, actually, what are the challenges? Uh, because nowadays, uh, every one of us are uh, actually busy in work. Uh, the challenges uh, for me, uh, I, I would like to suggest uh, the parents uh, actually need to be very reflective. So uh, when we want to be uh, have children, so uh, maybe uh, we are preparing for our parenthood, uh, actually, uh, we always need to suggest to do some reflection on our childhood and all our upbringing. Mm-hmm. So what kind of our own childhood experiences play a significant role in shaping our current self and influencing our parenting style? Okay. So we often unconsciously copy the methods of our own parents uh, used it in raising us. It isn't necessarily good or bad, maybe good or maybe bad, some good, some bad. However, we have to critically reflect to see such a way is really suitable for our child 
or suitable for the contemporary world. So my first issue is that uh, the challenge, first challenge is the reflection. We usually model what parents have done on us, but may be good or bad. But we need to critically think whether it is suitable for our uh, children because they are very unique, maybe not, may not have the same personality as we are. So the environment, social economic conditions may not be the same. So reflection is the first challenge. Uh, second challenge is our busy schedule. Parents, uh, most of the parents, uh, uh, most of the area, they have to work and take care of the uh, child. So they they still easily have uh, our feelings of burnout. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we ask parents uh, to reserve me time. Me time, that is to treat them good. So uh, as a parent, we need to uh, to have a call or read our emotion very often. So uh, we uh, our way of uh, emotion control will be a model for our children as well. So spare some time, uh, do something good to yourself. If you like cooking, spare time for cooking. If you like painting, spare time for painting. So at least spare one hour for yourself before you, uh, you uh, handle the uh, children, your children. So uh, do yourself good. The challenges is the stress. And the third challenge is the peer, okay? There are lots of people uh, giving you advice yeah. uh, or ask you to do that, to do what. So the peer pressure is the challenges of the uh, current parent as well. So uh, nowadays in Hong Kong, maybe the same as in uh, Melbourne, when I read uh, many uh, research articles, they have after-class activities. Mm -hmm. They uh, will provide uh, uh, many uh, learning opportunities for the kids. Actually, is it good for your child? Uh, you need to think and spare some time, uh, free time for the kids to be, uh, maybe to take rest or have enough uh, bad time, uh, quality time rather than uh, sending them to all the tutoring center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are three major challenges I can identify. Well, that is such a great introduction into what we're discussing here today, especially when it comes to that idea of what a secure attachment style is. Before we go ahead and discuss it even further, I would love to get to know you a little bit more and some of your recommendations for our audience by playing one of our channel's favorite icebreakers, a little get to know you section. Now, to start off with, what is the most recent book that you've read today? Uh, actually, um, I, I read a lot of books, uh, but I think uh, some of them are for just for the uh, workplace. But I would like to recommend a book that is uh, suitable uh, for parents, that mm. is The Boundary with Kids. So okay. uh, actually, this is a book benefit me much during uh, the stages when I, uh, my kids were very little. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a series, uh, Boundary with Kids, Boundary with Teens. So there is a lot of reflections for me. Uh, there are some favorite books I like. Uh, actually, I like reading autobiography. So okay. uh, for those um um, maybe uh, good people uh, like uh, Florence Nightingale, the founder of Modern Nursing. And then uh, I love reading uh, uh, the story of Mei Guang Yu. Okay, that is the founding prime minister of Singapore as well. Okay. So uh, uh, that is uh, maybe the the person, uh, what they experience, their journey, may give me some insight uh, on the challenges I'm facing, uh, give me uh, some encouragement. So there are always, uh, have, we are facing difficulties and challenges, but the good news is that we can overcome them one day. And then some expert, uh, some book I like to read that is related to cultures and uh, mm -hmm. some uh, story of immigrants like uh, John Lacock. Uh, so there's a book uh, written by uh, Amy Tan that is about the Chinese family uh, moving to United States the challenges between generations, the older generation, they carry the old Chinese tradition and culture, mm -hmm. but the younger generation, actually, they raise up in the state and there is a, a, a cultural a shock between two generations, how to overcome it and uh, uh, build a family. So that is a very good story. 
And then uh, there's another novel uh, by uh, Nicole Mo that is a child uh, migrate to uh, Europe. Uh, and then the, the book is called Lost in Translation, how to overcome the challenges of different cultures. So uh, I like reading uh, the actual the journey of those people who overcome all types of challenges, maybe uh, leading a country or maybe migrating to some other area that overcome all the cultural sort and that kind of books. Of mm-hmm. course, uh, I like those books, uh, academic, so uh, lots of books that I can refer to. Yeah, but I, I highly recommend a boundary, with, a, a boundary with kids and mm-hmm. boundary with teens for parents. There's so many great recommendations there, and I think um, I'm gonna have to list them down in the comment down in the description because there's so many things that I love. Um, I love seeing the personality come out when we talk about a guest's different interests. So I can definitely see your personality and definitely see a lot of your interests, which is so great to see. Now, when we move on to the most what is a movie that you would recommend to our viewers as well that you would love to share? Oh, John Cuffer for movie. I watched this as well. I, I, I read the book and then watched the movie as well. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, there uh, actually there are lots of good movies. Yeah, maybe some in, uh, produced by Hong Kong, some maybe mm. from Western countries. Yeah. So uh, Mission Impossible is also good. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, give me some time to relax. Okay, so it depends on uh, what uh, what are the uh, uh, what are the situation I'm facing. If mm-hmm. I work uh, very hard for that period of time, I will find a comic uh, movie to watch without uh, thinking anything, just laugh and then leave. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, if I feel distressed, I may uh, read some uh, watch some movie that's related to. Uh, maybe personal experience of upcoming challenges. So it depends on the situation, uh, the, uh, the, the maybe that uh, period of time, am I too heavy in work? Uh, am I too uh, maybe burn out? If I feel relaxed, then I will do something maybe more uh, uh, story making, uh, maybe some about family relationship. I mm-hmm. love that kind of movie as well, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm very much with you there when we talk about the movies that you just sort of listen to. And I think com- um, comedy is one of my favorite movies to watch just to just to unwind and not yeah. really think about a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of variety, good movie we can pick. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think we have some really good Mission Impossible is definitely one of my favorites. And I am waiting until I can have time to go and watch the new one that's come out. Yeah, I'm impressed by Tom Cruise. Uh, he is still physically so well. Yes. And uh, yeah, can do all the action by by himself. Yeah. Yes. No, I think that that's the most amazing part to watching him actually yeah. knowing that he's done the stunts himself. <laughs> now, looking into a bit more of a peep of people, do you have a person that you look up to in today's in today's society? Uh, actually, I, I should not say I have one particular person I look up to. Uh, from, uh, maybe this is uh, based on my personality. I, I usually uh, will uh, say some, uh, will maybe look up to the way a particular person handles rather than a particular person. From my perspective, same as me, and when I develop myself, I have strength and I have witnesses. Mm-hmm. I may not have a chance to do all things in a, an appropriate manner or make a good decision as well. Same as when I when I talk to my kids, two girls, uh, I always share with them, uh, as a parent, uh, I have a heart to nurture you and give the best uh, opportunity for you to learn and grow. But mm-hmm. sometimes I have my limitation, I may I may have to admit that uh, I may make some mistake mm-hmm. or maybe uh, I hurt them as well. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, my my attitude is that uh, we need to forgive each other. So that is the beauty of a family and among the people. 
So uh, when they grow up a little bit, uh, they are now adults. Uh, so when they grow up on the journey, so I repeat to mention that uh, I may not know mistake I've made because my intention may be good. When it come out, the outcome may not be as what they expect and what they want. So same as when I uh, look at those uh, leaders in the world. So they, I will evaluate what are the uh, good action they have done or good decision they have made. Mm -hmm. Why they can make such a decisions? Maybe because of that uh, environment provide the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Same as uh, when I mentioned Lee Kuan Yew, uh, I impressed that she did Singapore. Yeah, at that mm -hmm. difficult time uh, because Singapore just uh, uh, separate from Malaysia, and uh, there is no natural resources for such a small country. Mm -hmm. So how uh, he lead uh, the country to the next step? That is very important. Impressive, but mm -hmm. would that be happen in our day? May not necessary, because at that time, uh, those people may have they have own, uh, they are many, uh, they are collegial, uh, they are simple, they may have the common goal together. So nowadays, the challenges may be how to uh, motivate people or share the common goal or mm -hmm. common vision. So, so that situation, what uh, Lee Kuan Yew did may not be suitable to nowadays because uh, nowadays we are more democratic. Mm -hmm. How to share the a message and mobilize all the people, that is a lot of challenges. So from my perspective, there are many good leaders I can look for, but mm -hmm. I need to critically reflect if this is suitable for me or for the contemporary situation. Same mm -hmm. as what I mentioned at the beginning as a parent. Maybe my parent uh, is a great person raised me up so well at, in the old days, but the situation changed. So uh, we need to think, would this the way suitable for our next generation as well? Yeah, but they actually, those people will give us some insight. Yeah, absolutely will give us some insight. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's actually such a great way of thinking about it, especially looking at, you don't admire one person specifically, but you admire different people for different things that they brought to the world, they brought to society, they brought to leadership and how we build our world up today. And I think that's such a great way of sort of, because such a great way of wording it and sort of putting it into perspective when it comes to parenting, because you may not admire everything that your parent did for you, but then you admire little things here and there where they have done really well. Yeah. So uh, that is the reason why I can get rid of peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, because I, I prefer uh, to choose my own way and that is suitable for myself. Yeah, And I feel like yeah. everyone should be doing that. So that's so great. Now, during your academic pursuits, do you have a specific course or a specific lesson that you've had that has really stuck to you? Well... Uh, I think I'm I'm quite blessed. Uh, sometimes I feel some tasks very challenging, mm -hmm. but actually uh, when I work hard, the outcome is far better than I expected. So mm -hmm. I should say I, I have overcome many challenges, same as when I post to this division uh, in uh, 2005, there are lots of uh, issue uh, because uh, there's a high turnover uh, personnel uh, so uh, there are lots of challenges. Uh, I feel uh, a little bit tough at that time. Mm -hmm. But my attitude is that uh, uh, the worst situation will be over one day. So uh, I need to be, uh, that is a kind of perseverance. I need mm -hmm. to continue to work hard. Don't give, don't give up, don't feel despair. So the outcome usually comes better than I expected. Maybe from uh, from my training, because I study management before as well. Uh, mm. So there is a saying that uh, we prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So uh, usually uh, uh, I, I, I feel blessed. Uh, even uh, when I first start my uh, class as a teacher, because I was not trained uh, at that time, because I just uh, complete uh, finished my undergraduate, then uh, at that time, old days, we just asked to uh, to enter the classroom and take up the teaching. So uh, I just do it by my own, by my own judgment, uh, think about what my teachers 
uh, did before, what are the mm-hmm. best way. And then I designed my lesson. And then after the first uh, semester, my uh, teaching evaluation uh, actually were very excellent. So I feel blessed. Uh, no, uh, I, the outcome uh, usually turns uh, better than what I expect, even though I feel there are lots of challenges every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's so great. The fact that you sort of took that and made the best of what you knew, made the best of what you've understood. Yeah. Now, talking into parenting a whole lot more, parenting comes up and opens up with so many different questions, so many different meanings. What is your definition of what parenting is to you? Oh, that is a very good question. Yeah. Uh, when I um, plan to be a parent, Okay, uh, I usually ask the question, why do I want to be a parent? Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, parenting is quite subjective and uh, very different from each uh, uh, person. But for me, I have two uh, key motivations. Uh, uh, one, uh, one motivation is that uh, I study economics at my undergraduate level. Even though I moved to education now, yeah. Uh, I'm fully aware that uh, population play an instrumental role in economic role, very uh, instrumental uh, uh, motivation. So quality population is very important. So uh, I dedicate myself to education and parent education and uh, serving and, and decide to be a parent to contribute myself to the economy and the world. Okay. From my personal perspective, uh, actually, uh, Parenthood uh, and basic parenthood is a blessing from my perspective. To have mm-hmm. children is a blessing. Okay. So uh, it aligns with the natural progression of the life cycle. Uh, we were born by our parents. So we have a mission to have our own children. So being a parent, uh, I grow and mature through this journey uh, of nurturing my children. So I grow together with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, I learned to give, to reflect, ask me questions, okay? To change, I need to adopt, yeah, because to overcome all the stubbornness for myself. And uh, the last one is to enjoy. Mm-hmm. So no two people have the same path of parenting, even between husband and wife. Uh, their respective journeys and experiences for me uh, will be different too. But this is the best job, I think. Okay, so I've uh, read a research recently. Uh, in two thousand eighteen, there's a research out in Hong Kong. Uh, a group of uh, psychiatrists, the medical doctor, they uh, survey uh, uh, parents of adult children. Mm-hmm. More than eighty percent of them uh, find the parenting journey very fulfilling. So. Uh, so sometimes uh, people may feel this is a most difficult job. Okay, sometimes it may bring you the greatest joy or sometimes greatest pain. But uh, being a parent is very fulfilling, very mm-hmm. exciting and happy. So uh, sometimes you may feel distressed, but I will let you know this will be overcome one day. And most of the parents, when their child at the adulthood, they feel this journey very successful, and, uh, and fulfilling. So uh, don't uh, just uh, uh, focus on the current situation. So have the hope to raise your child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's such great advice and looking into the bit more of the definition and what to expect. Now, this sort of leads in with the next question. And I know you've probably mentioned this a little bit earlier, but when it comes to that transition into being a parent, What's one of the key things that you would love to tell our audience to be aware of? Okay. So uh, uh, through the transition, actually, um, when we, uh, when I draft the parent education framework, I have um, a very strong feeling that uh, we need to think about the role of a parent since our teenage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the teenagers, because they are, they are identified self at that time. So it is good for them to think about this themselves and their family. And then how do they project their future life? So mm-hmm. we teach teenagers for life planning. 
So family is also part of their life planning. So uh, usually people may think uh, about uh, what are the resources we have? Uh, do we have any uh, financial support able to raise a child? I think this is a minor stuff. The, uh, the most important one is the quality. Uh, how do you project uh, your role as a parent? What do you want to be? Uh, material uh, support or resources is important, but not essential. Sometimes with quality uh, family or parenting skills that you can raise a child with high quality. So try to reflect, uh, ask, maybe uh, uh, you, you need to have a moment to pause, to reflect on your own upbringing, your own child experiences, uh, how your current self, how you are being affected by your parents, then how do you form your future life and how do you raise your child? That is a very good moment, especially when one person is a teenager. That is the very good time to think about it. And then at the later stage, of course, you have the uh, your spouse or partner. You need to discuss with your partner and then uh, 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 stock take about the resources, the support mechanism. But uh, we are not able to get everything ready when we make a decision. So sometimes we will uh, find a way when we uh, path in the path of the gen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And looking into what we're here to talk about today, which is how secure attachment really fits into parenting. I know that you've explained a little bit of what attachment styles are and what attachment is. Can you explain a little bit more as to what a secure attachment means in the context of a child's development? Uh, I, I heard that uh, you have some uh, uh, episode on a uh, post attachment style already. So uh, I won't go deep into uh, the other uh, four uh, definition of four. But I, I want to give a brief overview about this four attachment style mm -hmm. and what are the impact before I, I talk about the secure attachment style. So uh, there are four types. Uh, the first one is a secure attachment, as you mentioned. And then the second one is insecure. Insecure type three, insecure type one is anxious resistant attachment. That mm -hmm. is insecure type. And uh, the third one is also on the insecure type. It is avoidant attachment style. And then the fourth is this organized attachment style. That is uh, 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 with uh, some scholar support on it uh, by Mary Ashworth. Okay, <laughs> so um, the three uh, secure, uh, insecure attachment style may cause harm to uh, 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 one person especially for the disorganized attachment style. So uh, there are lots of research from OECD mentioning that uh, about social emotional learning. So mm -hmm. uh, there is a risk that if those people under the false type disorganized style that, they are, that is difficult to predict the behavior, they are likely to uh, commit to crime at teenage and have some mental health problem. So that kind of research also done massive abundance among the medical professions because mm -hmm. the early infant that uh, lead to that kind of behavior that uh, so some uh, educators or uh, medical professions, they want to do some preventive measure and then they devise this kind of attachment and hope the family to pay more attention these uh, four types of uh, attachment style in order to make sure to minimize the crime. So a uh, secure attachment is the ideal one, but it is hard to get it because uh, we are, we are uh, in, uh, in, and we are hard to get everything perfect. Otherwise we pretend to be perfectionists. Uh, this is not good because uh, one of the attachment style will build our, our kids into a perfectionist, but that is because uh, that person is not secure. Uh, that person cannot accept error because mistake and error is very inevitable uh, in, uh, in, in workplace or in our studies. But we need to allow and explore. 
So uh, that is the reason why we not need to talk about secure attachment stuff. So uh, next step then, uh, how to build? Uh, actually, um, secure attachment style is a uh, is a kind of relationship between the children, a child, and uh, and uh, maybe a carer, a caregiver, a parents. So even a child may face different caregiver. They a child may face father and mother mm-hmm. or nanny. Okay. So different of them may have different personality. So a child may build a relationship with mother, for example, with secure attachment, maybe with a uh, father uh, to build a relationship on uh, maybe a uh, insecure uh, avoidant, okay? And for the nanny, if the nanny uh, is not caring enough, love enough, maybe that will build this organized attachment. So in reality, a child may have diff- may uh, develop different kinds of uh, attachment style. So we need to be aware of it. So um, the core or the essence of uh, building attachment style is the interaction between a child and an adult. Okay. okay. So that is uh, the the uh, very uh, uh, basic concept. So when we develop, when we talk about secure attachment, okay, so there are lots of ways to handle this topic. So uh, it depends on the personality. Okay, mm-hmm. same as I mentioned, uh, I share with my kids, I love them. Okay, but uh, I'm still a human. I have my limitation. So uh, I may feel exhausted after work. So uh, sometimes, I may be very caring, responsive. Uh, if my uh, physical condition is good, my emotion is good. But sometimes, I may not be so so um, may not be so caring to my kids. Mm-hmm. So uh, that would be hard for the kid. So that may have the chance of disorganized attachment. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in order to ensure secure attachment, from uh, we need to to think from our inner heart. Do we love our child? Mm-hmm. Okay. If yes, then uh, this is the basic, basic criteria, okay? Mm-hmm. But sometimes uh, I know that some parents, uh, they may not love the, uh, may, they may not want to have the baby. They just have the baby uh, by accident or uh, unintentionally uh, they have the baby. Or they are they need to fulfill the uh, mother-in-law or father-in-law or the parents uh, the uh, the older generation because in Chinese culture uh, they are quite traditions and want their uh, the mother uh, the 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 children to have uh, they want to have grandchildren okay so they have the pressure and then they have the baby and raise the kid so uh, we need to think and then decide the way forward okay. So the first thing we have a very stable emotion, okay. Sometimes this is hard. Uh, sometimes, for for example, uh, in workplace, uh, we have a lots of work, not just tasks, but some uh, office, uh, maybe some uh, uh, colleagues, uh, maybe have conflicts or different point of view. Mm-hmm. We may have argument or rivalry in the workplace, okay. So uh, for the working adult, they may have a very weak physical condition and emotion condition after work. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, we need to to be mindful about it, and uh, we control our emotions. Uh, if you can't, please don't uh, don't interact with the kids because the kids, uh, the even a baby, they are smart. Okay, uh, I know that. Uh, uh, I observed some movie, uh, maybe uh, some documentary. If the mother is not happy and carry the baby, the baby's face have no expression as well. The baby knows it, okay? So mm-hmm. if that is the case, then we need to seek help, maybe uh, from counselor, maybe seek help from your spouse, may, uh, maybe from your spouse, mm-hmm. or uh, if you know what, what is your situation, you can treat yourself good. Maybe uh, same as uh, I heard some mother, 
uh, they would take a break after work, one hour before they enter home, at least to have time to unwind, to make sure the emotion is good enough to interact with people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of ways to treat yourself good. So uh, for dealing with children's uh, secure attachment, the first is to deal with the adult's emotion. So um, if adults have a, 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 a strong uh, emotion regulation, mm -hmm. usually the kids will model it because there's a saying that uh, parents is the first teacher of a child, as Montessori mentioned. So uh, when uh, how the parent or adult deal with the emotion, if the uh, adult throw anger to the kids, then the kids run to throw anger. So mm -hmm. that is the situation we have to be aware. So the first thing is to deal with the adults. Sometimes the relationship between adults is also mm -hmm. important to build a secure attachment of the young children. So uh, in my uh, parent education framework for kindergarten, uh, we have a very uh, uh, lengthy chapter uh, that is on like uh, strength three about the parent uh, uh, herself or himself. Mm -hmm. and the relationship of all the family members, how to do uh, what uh, reconciliations, how to make compromise, how to uh, release stress. We teach mm -hmm. how to do mindfulness so the parents can do mindfulness. There are lots of suggestions to do to handle conflicts and to build and empower the parents to be a high emotional intelligent person. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing is to deal with the adults will take care of the kids. Yeah. So that boundary, I think when you're talking about taking that hour to themselves before they even interact with anyone, how how does that sort of build a secure relationship within themselves? So is it important for them to build a secure relationship with themselves first before building a secure relationship with a, their child? Yes, I do agree with it. But okay. uh, actually, um, I, I need to say uh, we cannot uh, expect a per parents to be perfect to be parents. Mm -hmm. Actually, we learn together. We learn together with the kids. So mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that uh, if there is, uh, because of love, we will find way to help our children. Mm -hmm. uh, because of love, then we will find way uh, to make ourselves perfect, better fit to be a parent. Mm -hmm. So don't be too demanding, have, having a high standard. Of course, to a certain extent, I say it should be good, but I should not say that not only parents, actually everyone in the workplace, we need to deal with our emotion as well. Yeah. So uh, that is very important. Don't think that it is only, oh, because I have to be parent, I need to to be have a high emotion. Uh, better not to be a parent. I, I, I should not say that. Because uh, uh, we need to handle the emotions because uh, since our, as a teenage, because uh, when I start my teaching professions, I teach a group of uh, a younger generations. Uh, uh, they are maybe a secondary or a level uh, stage. Mm -hmm. They are still mature, immature. I, I teach them how to manage stress because the public examination, there are lots of stress. Mm -hmm. I teach them stress management, uh, how to communicate communication skills, actually, when you uh, 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 did not uh, actually handle relationship, it's about the relation, uh, the interaction, maybe the verbal or non-verbal interactions, the behavior. So we uh, we nurture the younger generation, that kind of soft skill, soft skill. Mm -hmm. Actually, that, that, that is already uh, embedded, embedded into many uh, curriculum nowadays uh, across the uh, different countries. So uh, EQ, uh, emotional intelligence, uh, by uh, Coleman is very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, widely uh, known by everyone. So mm -hmm. I think this is a long-term journey, uh, but uh, we need to be aware, even though we have both gone through all the training like EQ, but uh, we are still human. We have our weaknesses. Uh, don't find it perfect, but we need to be aware. When mm -hmm. it is not good, don't find it excuse. Uh, treat yourself good, or you can shorten your interaction with with the, your baby a little bit while, uh, maybe not so long, uh, in order to allow time to break 
So you need may need seed help from your granddad. We call it a grandparents or grandmother to take care of it. So uh, dealing with personal EQ emotion is always important, no matter you are parents or in workplace in a family. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, dealing with emotion is important. So uh, but we now want to uh, make it uh, fun when the kids at the earliest stage. Mm-hmm. And I think like when it comes to society, especially, we find it very uncomfortable to sort of go through dealing with our emotions. And we much rather sort of pretend or forget that they aren't there. But I love what you're saying when it comes to it's important to deal with those emotions, to deal with that uncomfortable feeling, because especially when you're having to go back and deal with so many different people. And I know I've got a lot of my friends who say that their kids drive them crazy half the time when they come back and they're so energetic. And at the end of the day, when you're not as energetic as they are, but it's nice to have that, um, that conversation with them to say that you're not feeling as hyped up as they are or as energetic as they are. Why is it important for us to be honest with the kids and say that we're not as as um, emotionally enthusiastic as they are? Uh, I think uh, it depends on how old the kids are. Actually, kids may not understand uh, uh, your, your sharing. Yeah, because that is quite abstract. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, my, my, um, uh, back to your first, uh, statement that, uh, we, we are how to deal with our emotion. Okay. Uh, one keyword, two keywords uh, I should, uh, share with, uh, uh, everyone, uh, not only parents, mm-hmm. forgive and forget, forgive and forget. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, uh, if I, uh, uh, after work, uh, loss of stress and loss of, uh, maybe argue one, usually I don't argue with colleagues. Okay. If people have some different will, uh, I don't have hot debate. Uh, mm-hmm. I ask them to calm down. Okay. Let's think a while and then come back to discuss. Okay. Then that will keep our emotion in the workplace as stable as possible. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't argue with people because uh, when we argue, we have the temper that is difficult to to calm. Okay, and then uh, when you have anything not perfect in the office or not um, maybe not happy in the office, maybe with your colleagues or so, then after work I will forget everything. Okay, so the next day that is a new pattern. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, don't bring anything to your own after work. So uh, if not, that is very stressful for a particular person, okay? So uh, when you go home, uh, the kids may not know uh, you are not well. Uh, if you are physically unwell, she will, uh, the kids will know because uh, mm-hmm. uh, the kids had experienced fever or anything. But if you say that, oh, I'm not emotionally well, then the kids may not understand. Then uh, she may... He or she may model, oh, uh, I find an excuse. I'm not emotionally well. Okay. Yeah. So um, be a smart parent or wise parent. Or we need to hide that feeling until they are old, older enough, maybe a teenage. Uh, one day, uh, then you can share with them. Otherwise, for the baby, they don't know. So mm-hmm. you just say that, mm, mommy uh, have a little bit uh, uh, unwell, not say emotional, unwell. Okay. I pray for you for 50 minutes first. I will take a break. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back to you. Allow me some time to rest. Don't say emotions. Maybe I'm well. I don't feel well. I don't feel, uh, I feel headache. Uh, I feel uh, body pain or that kind of uh, uh, reasons. Then uh, let the kids know you have the, you need to, you have time to take care of yourself Mm -hmm. and let the kids know that, uh, uh, a boundary that uh, you will spend time with her for 15 minutes and then take a break and mm-hmm. then another 15 minutes. That is a good pattern to train the, be, uh, the kids more disciplined and well behaved. But mm-hmm. for the baby under six years old, uh, uh, not six years old, six months old, okay, for the infant, they don't understand. Once they cry, 
uh, you need to respond immediately. So for secure attachment, uh, there is a saying for baby under six uh, months old, uh, they are quite uh, intuitive. Once they just uh, seek attention when they feel unwell mm -hmm. or some physical needs. So don't ignore them when they cry, just carry them. Maybe they want some love, some touch from human, uh, then just carry that. Mm -hmm. For the after six months old, uh, the baby actually have some uh, cognitive development. They can differentiate, uh, 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 they may have some requests that is not very uh, genuine, okay? They, they will have start pretend, pray, and that kind of uh, game. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, you can start the discipline, but you need to see, is this a genuine request or not? But from me, uh, for the baby uh, under one year old, more close contact with adult mm -hmm. is preferable. Okay. So talking about some of the long-term benefits, why is it important? What are some of the challenges that sort of can come about when we are talking about teaching a child about having a secure attachment and also allowing ourselves to teach by example on what secure attachment is? Yes. Uh, secure attachment uh, bring a very long-term benefit to individual. Mm -hmm. Really, really good, uh, good foundation. So uh, if uh, a child have a secure attachment, uh, they usually uh, from the early stage have a, a, a increased rate of survival. Okay. Okay. So uh, the fertility rate is uh, high at the beginning because uh, actually that will affect the immune system. Mm -hmm. Once feel good for themselves, being loved, uh, then uh, the, the immune system turns better. Okay, so uh, that is uh, the first first uh, signal. Mm -hmm. And the second is about the uh, social emotional development. Okay, so and also a uh, holistic and a uh, healthy relationship with others. So uh, that is um, uh, and also develop uh, self regulation, the discipline, self regulation. That is mm -hmm. important uh, in the long term benefit. So what are they? Uh, actually, uh, Kids, if have a secure intact attachment, they think have a good self concept. That means they feel good for themselves. Mm -hmm. They accept themselves more, okay. and then they are they have the courage to make mistake and make attempt. So uh, they love explore new new challenges. So that is the reason why uh, we want a secure attachment. They feel good to themselves and to other. Easy to to build relationship with other. When they think good for themselves, they have confidence to themselves. They are willing to explore new things that they haven't come across, and they are in the workplace. They are willing to take new challenges. Mm -hmm. They feel more confident to do some something that they are not. They do not know well. So that is about self concept and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. They love themselves. Yeah. Okay. So it's not so much about the words that you say to encourage a secure attachment. It's more about um, you being there and how the actions are a lot more powerful than just saying, okay, I want you to feel confident in yourself. You're doing great. And all the praises that you would give a child, it's a lot more focused on the actions as to how you lead by example in a way. Uh, let me clarify. Uh, praises is not a type of secure attachment. Okay. Uh, secure attachments may be no words. Uh, maybe I go back to the uh, uh, infant stage. Mm -hmm. uh, because infant, actually, the infant do not do anything. We cannot praise them. Maybe just praise them. Oh, uh, you eat well, you sleep well. And then actually that is a kind of a sector. Uh, interaction, maybe mm -hmm. body touch, uh, a hug that will give the child a uh, secure attachment. So not just pray. Uh, and then uh, at the later stage, uh, we what we say, uh, the benefit not only self, uh, they have a better 
acceptance. But I should say we need to differentiate. They are not selfish. Okay. So for those people who have uh, a secure attachment, uh, they love themselves and they have empathy to others as well. Mm -hmm. They have empathy. So they tend to be able to contribute uh, themselves to the society further. So they are willing to take up some tasks that are, have challenges uh, that may not necessary to have the own benefit of uh, herself or himself. So that is the secure attachment that raised a kid. But that mm -hmm. is very ideal. I, I cannot say we can find anyone in the world, but uh, we look for that direction, okay? Mm -hmm. But for the adult, actually, uh, we may not be perfect. Uh, we, we cannot do anything for our child. Uh, at the stage, uh, maybe the child model the parents when they are under 10 years old. I should uh, let parents know. When they grow at the teenage, the uh, adolescent stage, uh, they value teachers and also value peers more than parents. Mm -hmm. So uh, parents don't feel upset. That is normal. Mm -hmm. They, You are still the significant figure in the family, but they will value the other more because they that is the de normal developmental stages. So at the begin, uh, at the first 10 years of a child, uh, a parent should so interact more often, spend more time with them, share the same value because family have the same value. Mm -hmm. They know them better, have more discussions. So for secure attachment uh, for the baby, uh, we encourage the uh, mother to have bedtime story, the parents to have bedtime story. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when they feed them, talk to them. So that is the quality time of adults and kids. And also, it is a good opportunity to teach the value and uh, the family uh, goal or the, the 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 value or some kinds of a way behavior you want them to build. So I think for the the impact of a parent is very very significant uh, for a child uh, from infant to ten years old. For the later stage, don't worry. They will come back when they grow up. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, there is some some missing. Some parents share with me. Oh, I feel too distressed. Uh, I am facing empty net. Uh, no, no worry. They will come back. Okay, so mm -hmm. that is a normal stages of development. Mm -hmm. And talking about the long term benefits, there also come a lot of challenges that can sort of come about when trying to foster the secure attachment chart. So secure attachment style. Do you, can you list some of the challenges that a lot of parents may face when trying to build that um, that parenting style with their children? Um, I think um, there are a few ways. Uh, maybe uh, quite uh, culturally restricted to Asian. I, I might share it. Okay. So, uh, but uh, same as what I mentioned, the. Uh, objective environment that is uh, the stress we are facing, okay, how we brought up. Uh, then some uh, some challenges are, uh, are the pride of the parents, the pride of parents, okay, mm -hmm. that is uh, we need to address. In Chinese culture, I should say, uh, they, they think that if uh, kids do well, that is their honor. Actually, we need to respect the kids especially at the teenage, uh, they have their own path. Mm -hmm. They have their own way. So sometimes uh, uh, they cannot build relationships with uh, the kids it, because when the kids do well, oh, that is what I've done good for them. Actually, we need to bring credit to, to let the child have their own credit. Don't take away their credit. So mm -hmm. uh, we need to be humble and respect the kids. When they are uh, turned to be successful or have some good achievement, let them own their success and build on it. Because uh, for parents, uh, our upbringing experience is quite different from the kids. Same as I share, the technology uh, changes, okay? So mm -hmm. they acquire information. It's very different. We cannot stop the kids to use computer but we need to teach them how to use it and discipline 
spare time, have a good timetable. Uh, you can play uh, uh, games, uh, uh, internet games, after how many hours of work. So this is a reward. So that is the way we can deal with the kid. So we need to uh, overcome uh, um, uh, some traditional way of uh, parents that uh, we need to respect our kids, respect their own ways, understand, try to hear their voice. But for the baby, we do as much as we can. But at the adolescence, we need to to accompany that, to grow with them. So uh, for me, actually, I, I feel blessed because uh, my kids are willing to share. They are willing to share what they experience in the workplace and in the school. Then I understand what are the situations in the peers. Let me know them better. What are the challenges? So uh, as a parent, we need to listen, not just think that we need to teach. And now we learn and grow with that. Mm -hmm. And I think what you've mentioned a few times um, throughout the show is the fact that we have a lot of people in our ear saying, this is how you should react. This is how, um, this is how you should be. This is how you should praise or punish or tell your child that this isn't how you behave. And I love the fact that you've, we've mentioned that a couple of times because it's something that I think especially one of these biggest challenges is, um, I know growing up, my mom used to always hear from my grandparents on how we should be raised or how um, how we should communicate or what we should do as a career. And it's it's so great to see how we're recognizing that as something that shouldn't be happening in today's society anymore, or we shouldn't really expect every child in every household to be a doctor or to be one of these high professional fields. Um, whereas we find a lot of kids now where we, a lot of children nowadays follow what their passion is, for example, if it's film or if it's um, being an artist or something that's a little bit more creative in today's world. It's, it's so great that we're now changing that perspective a little bit more. Yeah, but I, I still encourage the younger generations to respect the experience of their parents and grandparents. Actually, we need to keep keep some good components in our culture, and uh, so we can. Uh, what we I, I, we we our next generation will prosper. I, I should say because they have the good things, and then they need uh, they can adjust to the current contemporary world, so they can prosper very well. Yeah, so uh, that is my my belief. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that's so great. I think we have so much to learn from parents, and I, I think we've said that a little bit earlier as well. How we pick different things, the good and the bad, and we learn to build off of that. Whether it's we learn from it or we learn to add that into our life. So, putting into an everyday basis, what's a practical tool that parents can use to promote or to sort of promote that secure attachment? Uh, maybe I start from uh, uh, infant again. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think um, the first thing is to provide uh, uh, basic needs to the kids regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, feeding, uh, tummy feeding, uh, don't get the kids, uh, don't let the kids feel hungry, cry for food. So uh, regular feeding, and uh, uh, cleaning, uh, body washing, hygiene. So that is a kind uh, of way uh, to interact with kids. And also hygiene make uh, kids feel safe because if uh, kids feel uh, have uh, 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 have sick sick very often, that will be very bad uh, emotion impact on the child feel mm -hmm. insecure. So uh, hygiene and regular feeding. It's very important for six years, uh, before under six years, six months, and then a cleaning, and then a daily interaction, carrying, talking, uh, playing music, singing song. That is also have a long term impact uh, for academic achievement because uh, there's a saying that kids with a secure attachment will achieve better in you know, academic outcome as well. So uh, that's why uh, we interact more with kids at the mm -hmm. uh, under six year olds, in fact. So that is the best way, no matter what way, only you enjoy it because parents have different personalities, different strengths. I don't think there is only one way, but you spend time 
with your baby. It's already good enough. If you are working adults, uh, you need to delegate someone to do it. Then find a good nanny or your grandmother or grandparents to take care of the baby. That will play a certain extent of roles as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when going through that, those activities and practicing those activities on a regular basis, what are some of the challenges that can come up for a lot of parents when trying to aim to do that every day? Uh, the challenges actually is our discipline, the adult discipline. Like this, don't bother about it. Uh, actually, it's about adult. Sometimes, um, uh, for my saying, uh, we are weak, okay? So we may have a plan, but mm -hmm. sometimes plan may not be able to execute. So uh, discipline is very important. So uh, we need to, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, when we uh, conduct a workshop with a parent uh, about uh, uh, developing healthy uh, psychologically or emotionally well uh, mm -hmm. kids, uh, uh, we have um, a pediatric a pediatrician that is uh, the medical doctor take care of uh, uh, child health. Mm -hmm. uh, we share uh, an idea that kids need to be on bed uh, uh, at least for 15 hours per day for infant. Okay, then uh, one parent uh, came to us, asked the question, uh, I work until 7 o'clock, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, after dinner, it usually eight. Uh, I can not spend much time with my kids if the kids go to bed at 10 o'clock. Okay? Yeah. So usually uh, nowadays, the kids sleep late. Okay? Uh, then uh, the pediatrician insists that a kid needs at least 15 hours of sleeping time every day under... Mm -hmm six years old so uh, we can we need to find ways to help the kids because uh, the emotions will not be stable if a kids do not have a, a, a good quality sleeping time so mm -hmm. there recently a research saying that uh, the sleeping time is very important that will uh, impact the social emotional and also the mental health so as an adult uh, in our old days uh, the solution is that we need to work late. Uh, actually, some of the work may not necessarily be completed at the office. Okay, mm -hmm. in our old days, uh, we insist, uh, maybe among my peers, uh, we will leave the office at 6 o'clock and then go home to take care of the baby. Usually let the baby sleep at 9 or 10. Mm -hmm. Then we will start to, uh, to continue our office work at home. So uh, it is quite challenging for an adult. But everything is about discipline and the time management. So uh, we need to follow the pace of our kids so that to ensure uh, that uh, they can uh, grow healthier and uh, better. So mm -hmm. uh, there is a struggle. Uh, time management for an adult is, is, is important. And uh, we don't uh, be ambi uh, what, uh, what ambitious to give too much for our children. Same mm -hmm. as I put an example, uh, uh, I train kindergarten teachers and parents as well. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, parents may not know the pace of our kids. Uh, they thought that uh, they read one book every day, then the kids will know uh, seven books after a week. In yeah. fact, it's not. Because the kids cannot absorb all the information at one time. So as a kindergarten teacher or parents, when we tell the story, uh, story books, then uh, we usually recite and recite, repeat and repeat because uh, children's memory is short term. So we can read the book for more than a week. Don't bother. Until the kids grab all the concepts, memorize everything. So uh, it is about the discipline and understanding. So we don't need to give too much to the kids, mm -hmm. just sufficient. So uh, don't bother. If you need to prepare a book to read the kids, you can repeat and repeat for a week. For younger one, just sing song without anything content that is already good enough. For kids who are able to uh, 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 learn languages, 
maybe a one and a half years old, just repeat the storybook for a month, even a month can be. Ask mm. them to memorize. Then uh, it is not very so challenging for the adult because we set a very high standard for ourselves that uh, that make us burn out because yeah. we have to work. So uh, lower our standard, uh, don't give too much, but appropriate or suitable level is already good enough. Yeah. Mm. The challenge is that, is that we want to give too much. So we push ourselves to uh, too much pressure to put on ourselves as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to the discipline that a parent should have, is it beneficial then for a routine to be set when it comes to the kids know what to expect throughout the week or throughout the day that they're going to go through? This is a very good point. You have the potential to yeah, good parents. Yeah, <laughs> the routine is good. It's very important. Because uh, the children will learn the routine that means this is a type of time management and how to make self-management as well. The routine that saves the, the conflicts between the parents because you have already set, set the ground rule with the mm-hmm. kids. You need to do this, do that every day. So I will accompany you. So you will not passively be the same as what you mentioned by a friend uh, already that they have full of energy, okay? Mm-hmm. Of course, they're full of energy, but you have some common activities. If they are full of energy, I suggest the parents to organize more physical activity, maybe play the uh, uh, cycling and that kind of uh, activities, running uh, mm-hmm. or uh, before uh, dinner or any time. Then they will be more quiet and have some different types of activity. Quiet activities like story reading, uh, uh, maybe some uh, music uh, listening, and then a uh, uh, more active uh, physical activities that is important. That is what uh, nowadays children missing as well, especially after COVID. So you have different a variety of activities. Then the energy of your kids will be spent appropriately, and they will learn how to manage their own activities when they grow mm-hmm. up. That is a type of self management and minimize the conflicts between you and the kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. very good. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's good to know I've learned something. <laughs> yeah, very good. Wow. <laughs> now, coming into our open mic section, it gives you a chance to talk about anything that you are passionate about. Um, in the last minute or so, I know that you have a topic in mind that you'd love to share with our audience. So I'd love to allow that space to give you that time to share um, the topic of today. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think uh, from my uh past experience in uh, education and parent education and work with others uh actually uh, i think you, uh, the quality of people is very important so uh being a parent actually is a, a challenge for us to learn uh, how to grow and uh actually uh, when we talk about secure attachment uh we need a teamwork not just the kid themselves so uh, um, collaborations between husband and wife, family members or grandparents mm-hmm. or nanny is very important. So uh, we need to be frank and uh, have a common goal to work together for the benefit of the kids. So uh, nowadays, uh, before I close, uh, I suggest um, uh, I would like to emphasize more on collaboration. Because collaborations plays a net very significant role nowadays, uh, not only in the family, in the workplace, especially in the university, uh, there are lots of uh, new knowledge that uh, different from the traditional one. And now uh, mm-hmm. we need to uh, collaborate uh, between different disciplines like biochemistry and even AI. So uh, I think uh, I would like uh, to encourage every one of us uh, to be open-minded and willing to work with others, even though we have different perspectives, different interests, and then we discuss and reach uh, a consensus that can benefit everyone. So uh, I think uh, before I close, I, I will also mention as a family, we need to be able to forgive and forget. Conflict is normal, but uh, we need to for- forget it and forgive it we talk about the task, 
once the task complete, we have to uh, release all the un uh, uh, unhappy feeling. So uh, I think uh, there's a saying, if we forgive other person, that is treat myself good. Because when you hold the emotion, that will not solve. So sometimes uh, we better uh, stay calm to find a way forward rather than uh, have keeping on the argument and stuck all the situation. So uh, in the workplace, in the family or in the society, I, I want to promote collaboration that will be uh, good for everyone. Uh, that is what I want to share. No, I think that's such a great takeaway for to emphasize a lot on how important family members getting together. And I think what you said was so great when it comes to a common goal of raising a child or raising a happy and safe and secure child and raising them to be an adult. And I think that's what a lot of family members have in common with what they want their their aim of parenting to be. So it's such a great way to sort of end the show and sort of take yeah. away a lot with what we we're talking about today. Yeah, so, I mean, I wish uh, every parent a very fulfilling and enjoyable journey. Yes, no, I think every parent needs that. So that's, I think that's such a great wish to sort of have the end. Uh, thank you so much, Amelia, for joining me on the show today. Thank you for your time. Yeah. If there's any way that any audience member would like to get in contact with you to sort of ask questions that I have missed or to talk about something a little bit more in depth, is there any contact information that I can give out for our audience today? Uh, I can give uh, my email address to you. Yeah, that is uh, uh, A-M-E-N-Y-L-E-E -E at hkbu.edu.hk. Or you can find me through LinkedIn as well. Okay, perfect. Well, I will have those that information down in the show notes below for allow every audience member to find you a little bit easier and allow them to ask questions a lot more on secure attachment and as well as raising children and to be happier and more secure adults. So go, thank you so much for listening and go definitely go and check out Amelia and go and have a conversation with her or just go and check out some of the work that she's done. There's so many papers and so much work that she has put into helping us be a lot more better at raising, at being parents. So guys, thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you all in the next episode. You've been listening to Raising Parents, the Parenting Science Insights Podcast, produced by the Parenting Science Labs, a division of LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs, more episodes are available from 10 life management perspectives and can be found by searching LMSL on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting apps available on your devices. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider rating our show, sharing it, and subscribing to our channel as it helps other people find it so that we can grow and bring you more quality resources. More of our work can be found on our website at pa.lmsl.net where you can join our movement. I'm Dina Sargent. Thanks for tuning in.